Hey there, welcome to a new Procreate tutorial. I recently released this new Enchanted Botanicals brush kit. It features 100 stamp brushes for Procreate, and this is my hero art for that piece. Whenever I release a new brush kit, I like to do a few free tutorials on my blog and YouTube to show you how I use the brushes, how you can better use the brushes, or in this case, mostly stamps, to create really fun and intricate pieces of artwork. So, with Halloween coming around the corner, I decided to whip this up yesterday, and I really do mean whip this up, which is the beauty of these stamp brushes. You can create really fun pieces of art in no time at all. So, I knew what I roughly wanted to create. I had a super quick pencil sketch, and then I came in to procreate, and I started, this is my final sketch and we'll get to that. I'll walk you through the whole process. But what I started doing is just kind of knowing what kind of vibe I wanted. I decided I was gonna use the Enchanted Evening color palette, although I did use a color or two from Enchanted Romanticy as well. Those are the four color palettes that came with your kit. Um, and then I kind of just scrolled through all of these and chose what I thought would lend well to my spooky vibe, but with an element of kind of fun, cute florals, um, knowing that I would choose colors that would kind of give it that Halloween-y kind of vibe. So I ultimately decided on Floral 49 here. I thought it could be fun. Um, I went with Bud 15 down here, knowing that I could kind of do a fun black and white stripe and I wanted the detail of this leaf, which is number 19. Um, this is anther number 12 and then spark number two. So you don't need to remember all that. I'll walk you through it as we create the sketch together. But this sketch came together for me in maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 at most. So I wanna walk you through the whole process of using the stamps to create your sketch and then kind of altering them as you ink the colors to create your final piece. And then we'll add a lot of texture and little details. Um, and this is what we'll have at the end. Let's create the sketch together. I do have mine super light here so I can remember what I did. But of course, when I'm starting this, I start with essentially nothing. So your screen will be blank at this point. Um, go ahead and tap a layer. I have, of course, an initial sketch, but this will be layer one for you. And go ahead and rename it sketch. I like to name everything and keep it super organized because as we get into the full piece, full piece we'll have a ton of layers and that will really help us um, come back to things so we can add texture or edit or tweak them. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have the monoline brush from the top. And then I like to come to the wrench icon, click canvas, click drawing guide, turn it on and click edit drawing guide, make it the 2D grid and then bring your grid size all the way up so it's just divided into quadrants. And that just kind of helps me visually see how I'm gonna lay things out. I'm gonna pick a really dark color here. And to start, I knew I wanted kind of an apothecary style bottle in the middle. So I Googled that, uh, like real apothecary bottles, and I found one with like a general shape I liked that I thought would be easy to draw. So what I like to do is draw half of it. So what I did yesterday, let me make this a little bigger. I'm on about 2% here. And my canvas size, by the way, is 2000 by 2000, which is plenty big. Instagram needs to be a minimum of 1080 by 1080. So I'll draw a straight line right here and then put my finger down so that it becomes a perfectly straight line to the bottom of my page. And then same thing here. So I know that basically my shape of my bottle is gonna be a rectangle, a square and a circle. So if it helps you to kind of draw those things out and then connect them and round the edges, you can do that. I personally just kind of wing it. A lot of people will use basic shapes though. Sometimes I will for maybe the top, but this is how I started yesterday. So then I just kind of free handed my lines. And again, this is your rough sketch. We'll tweak it later. So it doesn't have to be too perfect. I usually do at least two rounds of sketches to kind of finalize things before I start inking and adding color. And then I knew the bottom would be slightly rounded. So I turned my page as needed to kind of get a good angle and that I'd want to have kind of a darker area in the bottom, even though my 
glass is going to be see-through in the end. I knew that there would be like a space down here where I'd want to add at minimum some texture to kind of define the bottom of the bottle. And I ended up altering my cork to be in line with the topper because really if the topper was coming through, it would look more like that. So that line would be connected. So you could go ahead and do that on your sketch. And again, I'm just doing half the sketch and I'll show you why in a second. And then again, if you want to do a full circle at the top, feel free. Otherwise, just kind of mimic the shape or any kind of bottle shape you want on top. I'm going to redo that. Two finger tap to undo. Come around like this. And I know we'll add some shadow here. And then this part of my bottom of my stopper kind of cork-like piece is going to go like that. And the reason I only draw half is then I will come swipe left, duplicate, tap my arrow tool, flip horizontal, turn snapping and magnetics on, and then just slide it over. And that just makes it more symmetrical. I went a little too far. Okay, good enough. And then I pinch those layers to merge them down. And then if any middle lines came out a little wonky, all I do is erase them and then just kind of connect them more smoothly. Again, this is our rough sketch, so we'll refine a lot of these things later on. All right, so I have my bottle. And then I knew I wanted, I usually start with what's in the center and then work my way out to fill the space. I knew I wanted kind of a, a poison bottle. So I thought I'm going to draw a simple skeleton in the middle. I didn't want it to be too realistic. So I just kind of free handed a basic skeleton shape. And again, you can do half and then flip it. Am I on a new layer? Yes. So that's when that is helpful. Um, draw just kind of a rough eye socket shape and an upside down heart is the nose. And then I decided, inspired by Hocus Pocus and the guy who has his mouth sewn shut, that that's what the mouth would look like. So again, you can hold your finger down and it'll make a perfectly straight line. And then for the bones, I thought about how they would connect both ways in deciding where I wanted to position them. So I just do two straight lines and then just a simple kind of bone shape at the end. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. It'll look great as we start adding details and textures. You can keep your illustrations super simple. And then again, whoops, I got a extra line here. I will swipe left to duplicate, flip horizontal, and kind of move it into place on the other side. And then I can also, instead of pinching the layers together, I can tap them and click Merge Down. And then I'll add the line, whoops, I'm on eraser still, add the lines to its face. And they could be imperfect, or if you want them perfect, you can tap that finger down to make it more, a little more perfect. So that part of our sketch is done. So I am gonna go ahead and merge those down. Whatever your bottom layer is named is the name that will take on when you merge layers. So then I knew I need to position my florals randomly. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that I like to work in odd numbers. That's most visually appealing to the eye. And again, I had already chosen floral 49. So I went down and I grabbed floral 49. I'm on a new layer again. And then I'm just going to stamp it down. I'm going to make it a wee bit bigger. And then I just started playing with, oops, I'm going to turn magnetics and snapping off so I can adjust it at will. So with my arrow tool, I just kind of started duplicate. I decided this one I was going to flip and I wanted it to be this angle. And then same thing, duplicate, and I was going to have my third one up here. So sometimes that takes me a minute to just kind of figure out where I'm going to place them. And I like the sizes to be slightly different just to create Whoops, I'm on free form as well. So you can do that, but when I alter size, I like to make sure that I'm on uniform so it doesn't distort things unless I'm intentionally doing that. So I'm on uniform now, which means it will keep the exact same shape. 
So at this point, all I had was what you can see in black here. So I had about three flowers and large, medium, small, kind of like that. And then the next thing I did was start creating, I'm gonna pinch those down. I'm not gonna bother naming them for now until we get to the end of this sketch process. So the next thing I did was place my buds. So I decided on bud 15 and I was thinking about the lines that are already in this one and the Beetlejuice commercials. Um, so I wore this shirt in celebration of the stripes from that. So it doesn't really matter what size you stamp it down, especially if on, you're on a new layer because you can adjust that with your arrow tool, especially since we are going to trace over this again. It doesn't matter if it gets a little pixelated. So I played with this for a minute, kind of thinking which way do I want these to come? I started with it that way. I ended up deciding this needed to fill some space this way. So I flipped it that way and decided it would be coming from behind the bottle, but I wanted room for it to be in front of the bottle as well. So I resized it a bit and kind of played with angle until I was happy with it. And you might notice this is in my original sketch is a little off. And the reason for that is as, as I started thinking about adding stems to my flowers, I realized I didn't really want this one to go in front. Now it very well could, that would be totally fine. But I just want you to be aware you can manipulate these stamps how you want. So what I ended up choosing to do is grabbing the selection tool. I'm on freehand here. And then I just grabbed, just circle that part of it and adjusted it a little. So it was at a little more of an angle to allow me to have room for my stem later. And some of those things you'll kind of decide as you go along in different parts of the process. Um, let's see, and now I have a bud over here. So I'm gonna use my selection tool again. And this one I decided I wanted it going the same direction. Ultimately, I play with things a little to decide how they fit best. It's kind of like working a puzzle. And again, I wanted it to come from behind. I wanted this one to be a little bigger and it was gonna come from behind my bottle. So roughly about there. So when I first did this, I left it as three. And then as I started adding my leaves, I realized it was gonna look better if I just took this part of that bud off, not to mention then it goes from six to five. So I have one, two, three, four, five, which leads me back to those odd numbers. So all I did was circle that, three finger swipe down and cut it out. But I, did, I don't think I decided that till later in my sketching process now, but I'm just gonna, uh, sketch or sketching process, but I wanted to tell you now just to be aware that's just another one of those little things you can edit and alter. So that is it for my buds. And then I started placing my leaves. So I had decided on leaf number 19. I really liked the curves of this one um, in contrast to the other lines I had going on. So again, I added a new layer and I just started stamping leaves down. I played with putting them all over, ultimately decided they looked best just along the bottom. So those are the kind of decisions you'll make as you're working on your sketch. And then if it bothers you that certain lines overlap in your sketch, just go ahead and erase them out. So I need to go back to my anther layer and then I can just erase that out. But you might not know that until you really finish your sketch. I do like to erase some things out, like maybe the bottle here that's overlapping the petal or the petals overlapping the bottle. I'll go back and alter that. All right, so we need another leaf. And again, I decided I wanted this one to come, you know, in the direction that made sense with my floral. And then I kind of based my leaf size on my floral size and also what filled space nicely. So again, I'm gonna duplicate in my rules of odds. I'm gonna have three leaves and I wanted this one to be in front of my bottle. So I'll angle it just a little bit so that it will end up looking like that. Again, if you wanna erase out extra lines so you can get a better visual feel free to do that. So then I felt like, oh, I'm, I'm in a pretty good place here. I really like how it's coming along. So then I went ahead and merged down all my layers 
And that was my basic sketch. The next thing I did was go back to my monoline brush and I knew that I wanted to have a moon and some stars. Can you see my, my nails? They match today's tutorial. That is not an accident. I just did them. It's got little, um, same kind of little crescent moon and little sparks. So I just really rough freehanded kind of a mystical moon shape. And then I grabbed a spark, which is all the way at the bottom. I decided spark two kind of fitted, fit the vibe best that I was going for. And again, I work in odd numbers. So I wanted three bigger ones, maybe even a little bigger there, there, and there. And I just kind of do this at random. And then I go slightly smaller. I did another one there, another one there. And maybe another one there. And then I make it even smaller. Oop, not quite that small. And again, all I'm really thinking about when I add these is balancing the piece and filling space where it needs it. And when it gets to the smallest stars, I don't necessarily worry too much about how many of them I have. I just kind of go with what fills the space best. So when I got to that point, if you want to darken those a little so you can see them better, just duplicate the layer and pinch them together. At this point, I thought I needed just a little more detail and I really wanted to bring in a fun anther. So I added a new layer and I went back to my monoline brush and I started adding in the final details. So I knew that I wanted some stems and I was going to have an anther coming out of each flower. So it's actually the, the stamen, but the anther is the top part of the stamen. The line that I'm drawing now is called the filament. And I really love adding curly cues and kind of extra details to make it more whimsical. And because of the crescent moon shape, I decided to create these arcs that kind of overlap and mimic the crescent moon shape. And that just kind of, bleh, crescent moon shape that kind of brings things together and makes them more cohesive. So even though it's kind of simple overall, I'm making really thoughtful design choices on how things go together. And again, I have three of those. So back to that rule of odds, I am gonna, oops, be on my main layer, kind of erase out some of those extra lines. Okay. So I'll merge that down. And the last thing we need to do is add our anthers. So I went with anther number 12. And again, I just kind of scrolled through and I tried one or two different things, but I was pretty decisive about what I thought would look best ultimately. And the easiest way to do these, I just kind of pick a size and then I'll stamp them roughly where I want them to go. And then I'll use my selection tool circle it, make sure you're on freehand, and then kind of rotate it into place. So if it overlaps the filament line that you drew, that's okay. You can erase it out. That's the whole point of our sketching if you wanna make it maybe a little bigger. And I'll do that on all three of these, and then our sketch will really be complete. So if you need to pause this video at any point, feel free. I did not give you a template for this one because I really want to encourage you to do these from scratch on your own. I think you'll learn a lot more. Most of my videos have been template based where you're tracing. Um, and especially for using these stamps, I really want to get you comfortable with learning to do this part completely on your own and coming up with unique, fun ways to design botanical floral pieces. So I could trace over those again, or I can just duplicate a few times to make them more bold. So that made it quite a bit more bold. I'm gonna erase out the lines again, just because that's how my brain works. And there. So that is how I came up with my sketch. And again, thanks to the stamps, um, it didn't take me that long at all. What takes me longer is actually coloring in and making design choices. 
but it's kind of a simple process where it gets a little more detailed is when we end up with like so many layers. Um, so keeping yourself organized as we move on to the next part will be especially important because we're going to add textures and clipping masks and all kinds of things to really make the piece come to life. So if you have not completed your sketch, go ahead and pause the video, keep working on it, or you could watch this video fully through. That's what I like to do when I'm taking a new class. Watch the video the first time just watching so that I'm not doing anything. Then I'll follow along again, actually working through it, just so I can really pay attention to what's being done. Our sketch is done. We are ready to start inking and adding all our details. So just make sure all your layers are together. I'll go ahead and delete out my original sketch and use the one we just made together. I'm gonna tap the in and reduce the opacity so it's something I can still see and work from but isn't so vibrant. The first thing we're actually gonna do is add our background. I don't usually add background first, but I knew that I wanted this piece to be dark and moody and kind of have the glow of the moon. So I'm gonna add a new layer on top, tap and hold, and rename it background. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that I don't tend to use this to change my background, even though it's kind of a fast and easy way to do things. Sometimes I'll play with it. I just feel like I have more control when I use a separate layer to manage that. So that is how I do it. So I'm gonna turn that back to white and I like to drag and drop color into my background. So to know um, that I wanted a lot of depth in the background, very simply, I decided not to go super dark. Like I want dark, but not too dark. So I'm pretty sure I used this color, which is the fourth from the right down here. And I think I accidentally added these. If you tap a color while you have it selected, you'll accidentally add those. All right, so I think I did this color. And I will give you a final copy of the artwork you can use as a reference photo. So that will be linked in the caption. And if you want to do that, you just save it to your iPad and then you go to, um, let's see, Canvas Reference right here, and then add image, import image, and then I can save that for my photos and then I have a reference. And I might have actually gone slightly darker then that so maybe let's try one more what did i do the fourth from the and actually i think that's what i went with let's compare let me grab this color bring it over it doesn't have to be exact but since i'm recreating actually it's one darker so i went a third from the right so that color right there this reference guy you can tap that little bar at the top and move him around. If he is just in your way, you can just tap it back off and turn it back on anytime you need it. So again, that's under the can or the wrench icon, which is your canvas, and then canvas here, reference off and on. All right, so we have that situated and now our sketch is really hard to see. So if you just tap your sketch layer in the magic wand icon, click hue saturation, and we're just gonna make it all the way to bright. And then if you need to tap the end and adjust it so you can see a little better, go ahead and do that. To add depth to my background, what I like to do is add a spot of darker color. So what I did is grab the really dark color from that palette, and then you're gonna need a airbrush. So I, in my watercolor kit, if you have that, use the soft blender. If you want to use something that's built into Procreate, um, go down to, let's see, airbrushing and just grab a soft blend brush. So just maybe this soft brush, make it a, you can just kind of draw in a circle -y shape. The other way you can do that without even using a different brush, and this is how I also do it sometimes, is to grab your monoline, draw a circle. So you're gonna draw a circle, tap your finger down, that makes a perfect circle, and then fill it with the darkest color. 
and then you can center it. You can just eyeball it. And then tap your magic wand again, click Gaussian Blur, and just blur it out until it's nice soft edges like that. So that is my background. So that just adds some fun depth. And as we start layering things over it, it's really going to look nice. So I usually keep that separate just in case I want to edit it later or if I maybe want to make it more subtle. Um, so for now, if you want to just rename that um, background too or whatever helps you remember. And then again, I might go ahead and make my sketch just a little brighter. So the first thing we'll probably start with, again, I like to work from the center out. So let's go ahead and add a new layer. And we're not going to name it quite yet because we're going to do a few things here. So I'm going to grab my lightest color, which is a very light gray, and on my monoline brush. And again, we're going to create our bottle outline. So my sketch is actually a little too, too bright. All right, so make sure you're on your new layer and just go ahead and draw the bottle outline without the cork at the bottom. So this time I might go ahead and just draw it from scratch on both sides. If you want perfect symmetry, what you can do, let's actually do that because we'll learn another trick, especially if you're new to Procreate. Go ahead and turn your drawing guide on this layer, click edit, click symmetry, and then make sure it's on vertical symmetry. And the lines are a little hard to see, so let's edit it one more time. And you can change the color of your lines to something more visible. I'll go with a light blue. And you can actually make them thicker too if you wanna be able to see it a little better. All right, so now I can see it just a little better. I know that drawing assist is on in this layer now. And what that does is you can complete both sides of your bottle at the same time. So I'll go ahead and again, I'm tapping my finger down to make that nice straight line. I'll kind of change my angle of my page to make it work best for me as a lefty. You might have it be a little different for you. Um, actually, that is probably something we'll do with texture. So go ahead and leave that line off and just worry about the main shape of the bottle. Again, I'm gonna pretend that that flower isn't there for now so that I can get a nice straight line. And then I'm just gonna kind of eyeball connecting it. I've gotten pretty good at that. So if you're not, don't worry, just kind of let's, let me kind of intentionally mess it up. All right, so see if I didn't get quite on well enough. All you have to do is then manually touch it up, take your eraser tool and fake it, no worries. You can smooth it out as many times as you need and just erase it from a distance. And once we start adding color, um, you're not going to be able to tell. All right. And then again, I'm going to do the bottom. Doesn't really matter which side you work from. So there is our basic outline for our bottle. And even here you can see, I'm a tiny bit off. I'm gonna fix it a tiny bit. Even though no one would probably notice, especially once we start adding details. So that is our bottle outline. So we can go ahead and turn drawing assist off. You can also do that right here just by tapping the layer and rename that bottle outline. Tap, oh, I don't know what on earth I just spelled there. Outline. And tap your sketch layer, add a new layer above it, and rename this. You can rename it glass because it'll be the glass of the bottle. You can name it bottle fill, whatever helps you remember. But we want to tap our bottle outline layer, click reference, and then click our glass layer. That's where we're going to fill, again, with that super light gray color and go ahead and just fill it. And reference means that it will confine your color fill when you drag and drop to the lines as indicated by the reference layer. So now we can turn that off since it's filled, but this also allows us to play with the opacity and keep that line on the outside for now. So your bottle opacity is up to you. I'll go ahead and start with maybe 30% for now and 
that should be pretty good. So what I usually like to do is get everything colored and inked and then go back and start adding texture and detail. So for the purposes of keeping this super organized, we're gonna group things into layers or layer groups. So all you have to do to do that is swipe right on both layers so that they're both blue, click group, and then you can rename that group bottle, jar, whatever you wanna call it. It's really an apothecary jar, so I probably should have called it jar, but we know what we mean. So, and now we can close that layer. And, and instead of having like 40 layers that take over our whole page, we'll be able to group them. Cause even though this is two layers right now, it's probably gonna end up five or six for each element we do. Um, we could go ahead and add the in interior part of the bottom of the stopper. I'm going to call it a quirk just for purposes of keeping things simple. That's not really what it is. Um, it's probably the like bottom of the glass stopper. So call it whatever you want. But that's what I called it when I was working because originally I thought it was going to be a quirk and then I kind of changed it. All right, that fell out of my layers because I want it below my glass, but within the same layer. Usually I do this at the end. All right, let's do this instead. There we go. I need it to stay in my layer. So for this, I have it below, and then I want it to be a slightly darker gray. Let's, we can always reduce the opacity, so let's go with maybe that gray right there. And then you're just gonna draw, you could use symmetry if you wanted, but you, this one's pretty easy to freehand. So just draw it in and fill it with color. And then again, just to make, make it, because it is glass and it's more see-through, I don't want it to be that visible. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity on that. All right, so bottle is done. So I'm gonna start a new video segment and we will work on the skull. All right, so let's draw our skull. If you didn't want a skull on yours, you could um, you just have it say poison. You could have it say nothing. You could have it, you could do this in another holiday and have it be love potion in different colors. You could have this just be a normal bottle and change it to be like bright colored florals and not a Halloween vibe. So you could really do this at any time of the year and just kind of alter your color palette and what's on the bottle to make it work year round. All right, so we'll add a new layer at the top. And we're gonna again use just the lightest gray color and work in a few layers. So I'm gonna draw my skull. And again, I'm just gonna freehand it kind of quickly. I want this to be artsy and not super perfect. And for now, I'm gonna leave him uncolored while I add the face so I can see my original sketch. And then I'll go back and fill the color. So we'll add another new layer and maybe you're almost, one of your really dark colors. You can test it and see how it looks. I'm gonna go one darker than that. So I'm on the second darkest color. And I'll just quickly draw in his face. I'm gonna make his nose, even though my sketch is symmetrical, I'm gonna make it a little wonky like that so it's a little more playful and fun. You could even, you know, like play with the shape of his mouth. I'm gonna do that this time, just for fun. Alternatively, you could also do these kind of stitches. So these kind of decisions are really what's gonna make your work more playful and unique. Even though you're using stencils that I drew, you're gonna make them your own through small choices like that. All right, so we'll just drag and drop. You can click continue filling and just tap those colors in. And now we can come back to our original layer and color and color his face in. We wanna add one more layer, drag it right beneath the skull face and let's turn it off for just a second so we can see what we're doing for color fill purposes. So I'm gonna draw two of the bones. So I'll draw two straight lines, make my kind of bone shape at the top, and then I need to close this shape in so that when I fill, it doesn't flood the page. If I don't fill that in and it was like behind the skull, we, if we had that on, 
and we forgot to do that, that's gonna flood your page. You don't want that. So you can either eyeball it and guess that you filled it in or you can turn off your layer temporarily to make sure you've got it enclosed. I want my bone to be a little more squared off. Just a touch. All right, and now I will do the same thing down here. Close off my shape, fill it. Now, and I could just draw all four because they probably wouldn't be perfect if they, they were real bones, but I love saving time. So I'm gonna duplicate, tap my arrow, flip it horizontally and slide it over into place. And then I'll merge those layers down. So I'm gonna rename that one bones, this one skull, and this one face, just to keep things organized. And I do want them on separate layers now because we're gonna add textures to really make it pop later. So again, I'm gonna swipe right on all those layers so that they're all selected. I'll click group and I'll rename that skull. All right, so all done with that. And I think ultimately what I decided to do with this one, once I had all the flowers in, is make it just a little smaller. And all you have to do to do that is make sure your whole layer is selected. Grab your arrow tool, make sure you're on uniform, and then I usually just shrink it a little bit from each side. So, I think when I did my first piece, I ultimately decided I wanted it just a little bit smaller. Next up, we are going to start inking our leaves and stems. Once again, we will come to the top and add a new layer. I am gonna go for, I think my second darkest color. Let me test that out. Nope, I'm gonna go for my very darkest. Yep, and then I might need to adjust that background just a little bit, make it more subtle. Let's go with 50% so we can see our leaves and vines and all that better. And then I'm just gonna start, might be a little hard to see on camera, but I, draw, I drew a slight arc and if you tap that at the top after, you can adjust it. And I do that a ton when I'm doing line work. You can adjust it and play with it and it's really great. And then I overlap my bottle slightly and then carefully erase out parts that overlap. So right now we're just gonna do our leaves and stems. We are not gonna do our buds because they're gonna be on a different layer. We can, however, do these curly cues. For those, I like to get at a good angle and kind of do that part in one fell swoop and then come back in to do that center part. Sometimes it takes me a few tries, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect to your original lines either. And you can go ahead and fill that in. And then I'm gonna do the leaves so again, I'm just being really loose. I did not change these stamps a ton for this particular design, but in future tutorials, I'll show you more how to customize them and make them your own kind of like I did in the PDF. So this full line is not gonna show, but I'll just add kind of a short one to get it into the bottle. Again, I like to go over and then erase it out a little bit so it really looks like it's going behind. So you're just gonna go ahead and ink all your leaves, your stems, whoops, I'm still on eraser. And if you're having too much trouble seeing, you can always temporarily turn your background off and then you can really see what you're doing. Again, try to do that in one swoop. It comes out smoother. If it didn't come out as smooth as you would like, try a different angle. and it doesn't have to be perfect. One thing I'll do is finish it and then maybe, you know, any arc that didn't come out quite as smooth as I would like or as rounded, I'll just manually touch it up like that. And then just smooth things out a little bit. And again, erase any overage on your bottle. I've 
got two leaves left and you might have to flip your background back on off and on as you're working to kind of see how things are looking. So again, just being super loose with it, not overthinking it. I'll fill it. And this is where the process kind of picks up a little bit. I like to have a show on or some music or something as I do this part. And again, you want this one to look like it's coming from behind the bottle. So kind of keep that in mind as you're tracing your sketch. Leave room for it to kind of come behind. All right, and then we've got one more of these curly Q guys. Fill that, and then again, erase out what goes over my bottle. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And that's really it for our stems and leaves. So we can go ahead and rename that. Um, you could rename it stems and leaves, just leaves, whatever helps you remember. For now, that is just gonna be a single layer, so we won't worry about grouping it quite yet. Next up, we're gonna work on the base of our flower, which is called the sepal. And I wanna kind of see what colors I ended up doing. So I did a really dark layer on the bottom sepal and a slightly lighter on the top. Um, all right, I'll turn that off for now. So again, I've got a new layer. I'm gonna do the whoop, top sepal first. Um, I'm gonna go with, let me test this out. like the third darkest one. And I'm just going to arc the shape. I know it's hard to see, maybe if I turn the background off again. Oops, I got a rogue line. Oh, that's there, I'll clear it. All right, so if you wanna be able to do this part with the background off, all you have to do is make your sketch darker again. So tap your sketch layer hue, saturation, brightness, and just make it more like gray like that. All right, so now we're back to our top layer and I'm just gonna do the top set of the sepal. So it's just kind of a leaf shape. And again, make sure you're, it's filled, your line is complete so that when you fill it, you don't fill your whole page. So I'm gonna do all three of those. Again, super quick with it helps the line stay flowier. And then we're gonna keep these separate. So I'm gonna call this, you could call it base if that helps you remember better, but just um, we're gonna do a top. Actually that one will end up being the bottom. Well, no, it won't. See built up. Okay, so then add another new layer right below it, and we'll go to back to our darkest color. And we're just gonna again stay loose with it and add another layer to this. And I, when I decided to sketch it, wanted it to be a little more defined so you can see how I went a bit off my original sketch so that you could see it a little better. Actually, I was right the first time. We're gonna put it on top, so it will be your top layer, but it's your bottom sepal. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Anyhow, rename it whatever helps you remember which is which, or you can just play with turning them off and on to figure it out. You could actually name one like dark blue and one lighter blue. All right, so that just giving them a slightly different color just adds a little bit matte little bit more depth and interest. And so again, I came off my original sketch to kind of make it a little more defined. And if I'm not fully on my stem, I'll just come down and edit it to 
fit a little better like that. So now we have our upper and lower sepal and we can continue adding layers of our flower. So I knew that I wanted my next layers to incorporate white and a lighter gray. And I just kind of played with it to see what looked best. I ended up going fairly quickly with what I chose. So you can see my back petal layer is kind of um, a light, these are kind of a blue gray. And I'm gonna go with that center color there and test that first. I can't remember exactly which one I used, but Let's do that first. Turn my reference back off and we're gonna add another new layer. And this is just basically a heart shape. And it's on top right now so we can see what we're doing but we'll drag it to the bottom later. All right, so two heart shapes kind of together like that. Again, doesn't have to be perfect to your lines. It'll all come out cute. It'll look a little more realistic if everything's not perfectly the same. And then we can take that and drag and drop it to the bottom. And now I can't see my sketch layer as well. So you could either just drag your sketch layer to the top or whatever works best for you. So that is our, let's call that our gray petals. And then on top, there's a super light gray. I'm just gonna call it white because it's almost white. And that just helps me remember what layer that is. And you're gonna kind of do the same thing. So it's two kind of heart shapes. And then I'm just guessing that I'm closing my shape. We'll find out when I try to close it in or color it in. And I did it that time. But if you need to be able to see, just turn some layers off. Usually if you eyeball it, you can come close enough. And I can see on that layer, the color fill missed a spot. So what I would do is come back to that layer using my color picker, grab it and just color it in. I like to do it when I notice it, otherwise I might forget. All right, then I make sure I'm back on my white petals layer and just and if your second sketch is off you can see how mine's off i just try to make this one off in the same way so that i get that same kind of border so instead of going perfectly over my sketch i go more with what i ended up drawing like that okay so now we've got that layer done as well and now this back part of my floral is going to be nice and dark. Let's turn this back on for a second just so we can kind of judge our colors. And I wanted that to be really dark as well along with the, um, the filament of my stamen. So we will do one more layer at the bottom here. Um, we'll just go ahead and rename that stamen or base of the flower, whatever back layer, whatever helps you remember again. So behind here is just kind of a little oval shape. So I'll just draw a circle and let that happen. And then I'll draw my two filaments. Again, oval, draw a circle, hold down. I don't tap my finger because I don't want it to be a perfect circle. And then I'll draw my two filaments, one filament two filament and okay and now that my background is on I can see that my top sepal is the same color as my background which means when I was drawing this I either went for a darker color or my background is a shade darker than I originally did so let's start with that so I'm going to go to this lightest color and down to my background and change it and if I go to my original, I feel like that's a shade lighter. Now I could go with that, but I liked it a little darker. So I'm gonna go back to this fourth one and instead I'm going to make that sepal a little darker. So I'm gonna go to the third one. And so I had named this one sepal top. So that is the top one. I should name this one sepal bottom. 
So instead of bottom, um, but that one goes on top. So that's kind of mind bending. It's bottom here, but it's the top layer here. Um, so I'm gonna go to sepal top and change the color. I'm gonna turn off my sketch. Still a little, how much contrast did I have in the first one? I guess it's pretty close, but it's actually, I can see now that it was, it was darker and then I added some texture. So I'm gonna go one more over to number four. And I will whoop, color fill those. Okay, that'll be better. And when we add texture, it'll, it'll help those differentiate from each other as well. So you can see they are slightly different colors. Um, and when we add the texture, we'll make that look even better. Okay. So I think that's gonna be it for our florals for now. So let's go ahead and swipe on all those layers to the right. So your sepal layers, your petals, and your stamen, and group those and rename it florals. All right, next we will add our anthers. We still have to do our buds, our moon, and our stars. I'm gonna bring my sketch back to the bottom. So I'm gonna bring it back down here. Whoops, didn't mean to group it. Two finger tap to undo, drop it, bring it down there. Um, do I have anything on that layer? I do not. All right, so I already have a new layer for some reason. I must have done that at some point. I will just leave that. If you don't have a new one, go ahead and draw a new one. And we are gonna do our anthers. So again, I'm gonna turn on my reference and I went really light and then dark. And you can zoom in on that. So you can see my back part is really dark, my front part is really light. And then again, we'll add texture and detail later. And some of this, I actually, I drew this yesterday and when I woke up today, there was a few little details that I was like, oh, it needs this. So I always like to sleep on something and then come back to it um, to see what I wanna change with fresh eyes. So that's a really good thing to do, especially if you're working for a client or for a special project. All right, so first I will do the really light gray, almost white color for my anther. And it's just kind of like a little location marker shape like that. And again, they don't all have to be the same because that'll make it look more realistic. Some can be a little whiter, some a little skinnier. Whoop, two finger tap to undo my stray mark. And then I'll take a really, the almost black color. I'll add a new layer below. And again, this is kind of a heart shape behind here. So try to just make sure you're closing that shape in. I did not, so I need to turn that layer off. There you go, now it's closed in. So that's what I meant by that in the last video. So this time I'll try to come a little more exaggerated cross fill. That worked better that time. And then I think we got one more here. Okay, and then the other thing I ended up doing is adding a little layer of gray, the bottom of that white anther. Um, let's go ahead and do it as a clipping mask, just in case we wanna edit it. So a clipping mask, I'll show you here in case those are new to you. I think I wanna use this exact same color. So if I go on top, new layer on top of my white part of the anther, and I color a line here, to kind of add a base, you can see that it's not staying on my white shape. But if I add a clipping mask, it confines it to the layer right below it. So I can color over the lines, but, and if I make my brush bigger, I can do that really quickly and just add a base to each of these, thanks to that clipping mask. All right, so that is it for our anthers for now. So I'll go ahead and rename that 
white anther. Dark anther. Whoop. And I'll just rename this detail. So a lot of times if I'm just doing a little detail above a layer, that's what I'll call it. So again, we'll group that and rename it anthers. So we can come back to that when we want to add texture. Let's go ahead and ink our buds here. So I am gonna grab the darkest color in my monoline brush and add a new layer. And we'll go ahead, zoom in here. Whoop, way too big. Go back down to about 2%. I'm gonna draw a circle and then you can always edit it move it around a little bit, and also do the lines just like the stamp. And again, I'm being free and loose with it. I'm not being super precise. And then like I did with a stem earlier in this, if you intentionally kind of create an arc shape, you will get this option to edit arc. And I really like it because I can take the blue dots and align them as I want. but it does have to be somewhat of an arc. If it's too close to a straight line like that, then sometimes, that time it works like an arc, but sometimes Procreate will turn it into a straight line. So sometimes I'll exaggerate the arc and then drag my blue dots over. All right, again, we need a circle and then our line work. Tap finger down for that perfect circle. If you don't want it to be a perfect circle, you obviously can omit that part. And then my arc came over my bottle just a little and I'll erase that out. Same thing for my other two. And then We'll color these in with a stripey black and white pattern. Gives it kind of a fun Beetlejuicy inspired vibe. Also why I chose this particular cardigan because it had a similar look. In fact, I actually just texted a picture of these nails to my mom. And she was like, oh, your cardigan has Beetlejuice vibes. And I was like, that was not unintentional. I might have planned that. I have not seen the new Beetlejuice yet, but I do plan to. If you're new to my work, I am a Halloween baby. So I really love all things Halloween. I already have my costume all planned out for this year. I am being a classic witch, but I got a really fun oversized hat on Etsy. All right, so that is all inked and now we're gonna add color. So we're gonna add a new layer below and I'm gonna grab the really light gray, almost white. <clears throat> and when I did this, I played with it. So I ended up printing this out and you could also print this out as well. I'll have this in the blog post and caption for you if you would like to print it versus doing the reference photo. I played with, see how I have three white and two black. I played with doing the reverse of that, but it looked much better for the white to be on the edges. So what we're gonna do is come in here, we're gonna make our top layer reference like we did earlier, and on our bottom layer, we'll drag and drop the color. So we'll start with the white. I can also use continue filling and do the middle and sides. And then I'm gonna go with an almost black for the center. If it doesn't fill quite completely, we can come in and touch that up with a, um, a monoline brush. Sometimes when there's little nooks and crannies, the fill doesn't quite get in there. You can see right there. So I'll just take my monoline brush and tap in anything that didn't completely fill. So I like to zoom in and you can use this color picker tool to quickly grab another color and kind of go between to make sure all those little edges are filled in. That looks pretty good on that one. 
Oh, I feel like I didn't do the middle on this one. I'm gonna grab it from here. Yep, I did it. All right, and then fill in that little bit. Double check these. Dark. Light. And this one. It's usually just in the little corners, just a little bit. Sometimes when you have small details. All right, and then we will add some texture to those later, but that is it for now. Isn't that fun? Um, and now we'll really make it bright with our moon and stars, and that's gonna go just a little quicker. So I'm gonna rename this um, bud color, and we'll take reference off of that because we're done with that and rename that bud outlines. I will swipe right, so both are selected, group, and now re rename that um, buds. And since we have all these nice little layer things, when we go back to add our texture, we can open one at a time or turn them off if we need to, to add all the little details and textures. Okay, let's do our moon and stars. I'm gonna use this middle orangey color here and I've got my monoline on. I'll add a new layer. I'm gonna draw a C shape and go ahead and just let Procreate make an ellipse. And then I might play with it just a little. And then I'll draw the interior. Again, I can edit it to match my lines up a little better. And I wanted it to be kind of a funky shaped moon. Um, so you can play with that. My original one was a wee bit skinnier, but not by much. And then you'll love the stars part because we're just gonna use these as is and fill them. So I think we'll go back, I think we did the small sparks first and it's still the same size. So just kind of go over somewhat closely. Whoops, that one stayed. I can adjust it by circling and moving it. And then you can just go over those spots, make it a little bigger, maybe even a little bigger there, and then the biggest size there. And now we can just drag and drop our color and click continue filling and tap it all in. On the small ones, you might need to zoom in just to make sure you get it in there. And then once I got done, I actually ended up wanting to change the color slightly. And I played with these light colors and ended up liking, I can't remember, let's try this. I can't remember if I did the lighter one or the darker one from Enchanted Botanicals. I think I did the lighter one. I decided to change the color to be slightly more muted. So then I just, if I wanna change them, just tap back over them with a new color like that. And we'll go ahead and add our glow since we're already in here. So go back to a bright color, maybe even that orange color or the light yellow. And we're going to go back to glow. So if you go in your recent brushes, you should be able to go right back to that softer brush you used earlier for the background. And we're going to make it a smallish size. And it's okay if this looks really bright. So just go ahead and around each star if you want to glow on yours. And wait, did I? I'm not on a new layer. That's no good. Two finger tap to undo. <clears throat> we want a new layer. So I'm going to go behind that layer. I'll rename this one Moon and Stars. I'm going to rename this one Glow because we need to be able to adjust it. And I'm just going to quickly tap in some glow uh, behind each star and then I'm going to reduce the opacity by tapping the end layer and just making it pretty subtle and I go for about a 15 and it's on its own layer so I can always play with that later so let's go ahead and group those two together and you can just call this sky or whatever helps you remember and now we can start adding texture. Since we're already on the moon and stars, let's go ahead and add some texture to our moon. So what I like to do is add a new layer above 
and a clipping mask, and we will add some texture. So the brush I use for almost all my texture lately is this Gritty Shader. You can use anything in your uh, brush library that has some grit to it. This one that I use a lot is from my Artsy Aesthetic Kit. It's called the Gritty Shader, and it just adds some depth and texture at the same time. It's built in that way, so it, it adds some shading and texture at the same time. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And when I do this, I usually just add uh, some low lights and highlights in a darker and lighter color. So since our moon and stars are on the same layer, I am going to select my moon by using the ribbon tool. And again, I'm on that new layer, but that allows me to color right on the moon without it getting in the stars. And if you zoom in, you can see how that has built in shading as well as fun texture which is why I use this brush so much. Um, and then I'm gonna go for a lighter color. So I might even just grab the same color we used for the stars and add a little highlight anywhere it would make sense. And you can be pretty subtle with that and still have a nice um, difference. And maybe there's a little shading in the middle. And if you play with the brush size, it really changes the look as well especially if you go really small or really big. So I'm just gonna add some subtle texture there and you can already see how it really starts to make it come to life. So we'll go through each of our sets of layers and do the same thing um, until we've got them all done. All right, let's just work our way back down. So we're done with, whoops, we're done with the sky and let's do the bud. So we're gonna go right above the bud color layer, add a new layer clipping mask. You can just name this texture, detail, whatever you would like to do. And I'm going to go for a pretty dark color. I'm going to try this third darkest and zoom in. And I'm just going to add a little texture to the bottom of each of these to kind of make them look more spherical, add that texture and shading at the same time. So that one is as easy as that. All done. Since that was so fast, I won't even stop the video. I like to do the videos in smaller segments because I airdrop them over to my MacBook and then I edit them. And if my video gets too long with my sketching video, it took forever to transfer to my computer. So if I do short segments and piece them together, um, it just works better. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here for our anther. And our shading can be the same color, same brush, and I'm gonna put it um, above our details, but I want it to show just on the white. So I'm going to add it here right above the details layer. That was our little line here that we added. And I'm going to add another clipping mask to it. And this time it will be shading. And then that brush size still works okay. So I'm just going to tap in a little shading on each anther. All right, just like that. And that again, simple as that. So let's go ahead and just move on to the florals. So for this, we're gonna start with our, let's start with our gray florals, our gray petals and add a new layer. Turn our clipping mask on, rename shading again. And I'm gonna see if the same, yep, the same color works. Again, I'm just tapping in the tiniest bit of texture there. If you want it to be more subtle, press less hard. Like if I gently tap in, if I press harder, it's darker. So if you want a little darker texture in the center there, you could add that. That's, that's kind of nice actually. Um, and then we'll do the same thing above our white petals. So add a new layer, clipping mask, I'll call it shading. Sometimes when I start adding all this shading, I get lazy about naming it, but it is it is helpful. So we wanna go a little darker than our petals. Um, maybe I'll go for the second gray. And again, just tap in some shading. Maybe get a little darker at the bottom. And then while we're here, let's go ahead and add our petal lines. So another layer, clipping mask, and we'll call this lines. I'm just gonna go back to my recent brushes and grab our basic mono line and a really dark color. 
And then I did three petal lines for each. You can do whatever you want, you can do none, but I ultimately like the look of three on each. So I'm just quickly adding those details. All right, so I have three on each. Now we're gonna go to our top sepal. And again, a clipping mask, rename shading. For this really dark color, I decided I would go with shading that was a little lighter. So I, whoop, gotta go back to that shading brush. And I added, and you can see that makes the bottom layer of our sepal pop a little more because we've added that kind of glowy effect. And then the bottom sepal, I decided to add lines instead. Um, and actually you could even add some on this back part. Where is that here? We've got that on our stamen. So I'll add a clipping mask. I'm gonna get lazy about naming it shading and I'll tap in a little there as well because that's kind of fun. And then I'll go back to my mono line and I'm gonna grab a fairly light brush, maybe this fourth gray color there. And I'm gonna come back um, to my bottom sepal and add a new layer, clipping mask, rename it lines. And so originally when I did this one, I added three lines on this as well, kind of like that, but I used a smaller brush size. So I changed this to more like a 1% just to add some variation and finer detail like that. So I did that on all three. Oop. Kind of try to follow the line of the original leaf somewhat. Yeah, I don't really like how that one came out. I'm gonna try from a different angle. That's better. So all these little lines and details are quite simple, but they really change the look of your overall piece. Um, so I think that can be it for flowers. You can, I mean, you can add more details. You could do dots. You can add um, more of the stamen. You can add some, really anything you want to do more lines. Um, but for our purposes today, for this tutorial, we're going to call that good and move on to the next segment. All right, so let's close up our florals and now we're at leaves. And so when I originally did this, I'm going to add a new layer in a clipping mask. Again, name it shading. And I did add some subtle texture and all I did was go to the darkest color and then classic and make it all the way black. And then because we have our vines on here as well, you will need to grab the selection tool and kind of circle the leaf so that we're not getting texture on our pieces where we don't want it. So, no, let me look at, yep, you can see that on camera. Okay, so it's, it's kind of subtle when you're looking at it in person, but it does add some depth to your leaf to take that extra step and add some black. So I just, Kind of tap it in and do that on all three leaves. This one you have to be a little more careful because we have that. So I just kind of draw around our other stem so that it doesn't get any shading on it. It probably wouldn't even be that noticeable, but it's pretty easy to do that. So there's some subtle texture there and I'm just tapping in a little extra. And I think I also did that on these guys. So I'll circle those, tap in some dark texture on each of those. Whoops. Kind of crescent leaves. Whoop. Select this last one. Oh, and I can see there, I've got one of those spots that didn't quite fill. So I'm just gonna turn off my shading for a second, go to my leaf layer, grab my color selection tool, back to my basic monoline and just tap in that color. 
Then I can turn my shading back on. And now we're just going to add another layer above it, add another clipping mask. We'll call this one lines. Um, I am going to go back to my basic mono line that's at 1%, and I'm gonna grab a lighter color this time. I'm gonna try this lightest of the dark layer. And then again, I'm at like a 1%. I'm just gonna add in a simple leap line. Really simple, you could add in more detailed ones if you wanted to try that. And that's looking pretty good. Um, one thing I did notice is I want my buds below my leaves, I think. I don't want that line in front. So to fix that, all I have to do is take my buds and drag it down here below my leaves. And now that line is behind that leaf. And I think I prefer that. Um, so that I think is it for that. So now we can select all those by swiping right, group. And now we have our leaves. So everything is just super nice and organized. So we already did our buds. So now we have our skull. So let's go ahead, tap our skull layer, clipping mask, again, shading. So you can, you know, it's the same process. You're just adding a little detail to every single layer. And for this one, I'm just gonna do some subtle, like that light gray, probably gonna need a smaller brush size. And because it's on its own layer, it's not gonna get on those bones beneath. So that's a major case for keeping. And you could almost do that and then maybe go a little darker and just along the edge, maybe make it even a little darker. Same thing above your bones. You wanna add a clipping mask. You can, re mine keeps going shadings from autocorrect, but shading. Um, and then I'm gonna go maybe that dark and just add I'm gonna go smaller. Actually, maybe I wanna airbrush it. I'm gonna airbrush. And that'll just create a little depth. And then if I want it to be more subtle, I'll tap the N and just kind of go with what looks best there. And maybe if you wanted a little texture on top of it, you could add a new clipping mask and then go back to that texture brush and add a little texture as well. That's kind of fun. All right, um, and you could even do some shading on the edges of the bones. I did not originally, but I might add a few just dots kind of at the end of the bones this time. All right, and now that I zoom out, I wanna make the shading even more subtle. I'm gonna make it about 15% eh, there. All right, our bottle is up, whoops, sorry. Our bottle is up last, so we will do that and then um, pretty much we'll be done. Okay, and we're back. Sorry, that was my husband calling. I have like do not disturb on everything, but of course my husband and my kids can still get through and he almost never calls me during the workday. He wanted to see if I wanted to sneak out early to golf, but I actually have a cold and I like just can't even, I can do this, but I can't do anything extra. <laughs> All right, so. That was totally beside the point. So now we're on our bottle and we are going to take our outline and soften it. So all we have to do is go on that layer, tap our magic wand, click Gaussian blur, and we're just gonna soften it so it's kind of glowy. Isn't that fun? So easy, but makes it kind of magical. Um, and then we still need to add a little texture to our bottle and we need to fill it with poison. So let's add a new layer and do that first. So new layer, let's call this our poison, liquid, whatever you want to call it. You could make it green if you wanted. I made mine kind of a dark blue from the palette. Back to my basic mine line and all I did was kind of Go close to the edge, but not totally to the edge. Just kind of eyeballed both sides. And then kind of followed the curve, just like if it were a real glass bottle. All the way around. 
and then I kind of arced it towards the back for this part because that's how it would look in a real bottle. And, whoop, must not have closed my shape over here. Let's see if I did it now without, okay. Otherwise I was gonna have to turn some layers off to see what I was doing. Um, and I wanna even this out just a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna reduce the opacity of that by tapping the end. I want it to be dark, but not too dark. Um, actually, let's just leave it fully dark for now while we add our highlights and then decide if we want it to be less colorful. Um, so I'm just trying to decide, whoops how I wanna do my highlights and shadows. So one thing we wanna do is make a shadow off the bottom of the bottle down here. So let's go ahead and above our cork layer, um, just come to that and we're gonna make this our shadow of our bottle. And we'll go for a pretty dark color and I'm gonna go back to that shader and I'm just going to make it a little bigger, kind of manually drawing a little shadow. for that bottle. Okay, and then I'm gonna zoom out so I can see better what's happening here and reduce the opacity so it's slightly more subtle. I'm gonna go for maybe like 40%. And we want to add some highlights and low lights to our bottle, but we need to put them above our poison so we can see them. So let's go ahead and name this layer highlights and if we clipping mask this to our bottle then we can clipping mask this to our bottle so i'll grab a really light color and i'm going to add oh am i on i'm going to make sure i'm on super white oh you know why okay this is why i did this before um, it's because our glass is so opaque and simple. So what I'm gonna do instead, no clipping mask, and we'll just confine it. All right, so we'll just add a new layer, see how we can see it now. And we'll use our selection tool. I'm just gonna kind of carefully draw around the top here and around this part. And I can erase some out if I need to. I'm just gonna tap in a little bit of highlighting, make that a little smaller. And I also want, and if any comes over your line, you can just go back and erase it out when you zoom in. I wanna do the same thing on the bottle edges mostly along the top here. And another thing you can do with your selection, you could do like a rectangle and get right along that top there. And then I'm gonna make it smaller, more subtle. Oh, sometimes it looks more subtle at a bigger size. So I'll just tap some of that in and if any goes over, like I said, I'll just erase it out. And then <clears throat> we need a little on the edges of our bottle too. So if you make it a little smaller size, you don't have to select as much. And you could use the glowy brush for this as well. I just like the texture. A little more subtle at the bottom. And then I wanna do, I'm gonna rename that highlights. So I forgot to do that. I'm gonna call this one um, shading, I guess. And then I'll take that really dark blue again. Back to our palettes. It's almost black. And this would be the bottom of our bottle and it would kind of be darker. 
at least that's how I envision it. So I added a little texture down there. And then I'm actually gonna turn off my sketch because it's making things a little hard to see. Okay. And I might have that go all the way to the edges. Just kind of play with it to see what you think looks nicest. And then if you wanted to add some shading to the edges, you could come above the glass and add that clipping mask there so it confines to the bottle more easily for that part. Kind of a little shading and a little highlights, some underneath there so you give it that glass shape. And then simply add a little on your cork as well. So another clipping mask. Really subtle, maybe even darker. Actually, I can't go darker because of the clipping mask, but I can make my cork a little more visible there. Um, and again, if you wanted it to be even darker, you can go above it without a clipping mask. And then you just kind of have to whoop, go back to freehand. Oh, actually, I have a better idea. All right, let's take that off for a second. Let's go above, let's go to cork go to clipping mask, go to automatic, select your cork. Now go to the layer above. There we go. That's the smarter way to do it. Sometimes I forget I can do that. And then maybe just while you're in there, add a quick highlight or two as well. There, much easier. And that kind of gives it that glowy effect. And now I notice that my poison layer is a little wonky at one side on the bottom now that we've turned our um, sketch off. So I just want to smooth that out and make it a little more even. These are just like nitpicky little things. We're pretty much done here. So that's your piece. And now maybe you want to, um, you know, I thought I toyed with things like, did I want a label behind the skull? So maybe you want to try you know, grabbing a brown color and making a ratty kind of label, adding some texture to that. Maybe you think it pops better. I actually think my skull in liquid layer, I want to be slightly different. So I'm gonna go to my bottle and my poison and I'm gonna go to freeform and I'm gonna scooch this down so that the layer of the liquid is a little more like around his eyes. So that looks a little better to me. And then if you think things like, oh, my, my glow looks a little too, um, glowy, you can come back up to sky and your glow layer and reduce that maybe to more like 8% and then it's even more subtle. And sometimes you can just turn it off and on to see how that looks to you. But otherwise, that is it. So our sketch took maybe 15 minutes coloring and inking and adding all the details takes a little longer, but it's such a fun process really. And I just thought this was a good way to show you how to kind of use the stamps as is, really make it your own. Um, but if you can even alter the stamps even more, you can really make these in your unique style. So I hope you had a lot of fun with this. I think it's gonna end up a fairly long tutorial once I piece these all together. Um, so thank you very much for spending time with me and following along. I hope you um, tag me when you share things on Instagram. I'm at by Donna Cole, and I will see you for the next tutorial.